He's just an all-around good guy. Kim Delaney can barely hold back the tears as she remembers her father, John Frankowski Sr., killed in an apparent dispute over money. Why? Is it all worth the money? John was looking forward to retirement at his home on Long Island. So you had a tight relationship with your dad? Yes, very close. Yes, I was his little girl, his pumpkin head. I miss hearing. Kim still hears her father's voice. It's recorded in the very last message he sent. How often do you go back and listen to them? Uh, quite often, yeah. Mostly when I'm alone at night. Just need to hear it. Sometimes it helps me sleep. Kim's brother, John Jr., has never heard that message until we played it for him. He's emotional as he realizes he's about to hear for the first time the voice of his father speaking from the grave. I was just thinking of you. You have to call me back. I love you. You might give a kiss to kiss me. When their grandmother Helen died, their father John became the executor of her estate worth a little over $200,000. He was supposed to split the money evenly with his two sisters, Anne Marie and Sandra, Kim's aunts. What is Sandra like? It's just an uneducated low life. And um, all she cares about is herself and her family, and that's really it. She's your aunt. Did you have any relationship with her? No, I did not. What about Anne Marie? What was she like? Selfish. And um, if I could use my dad's words, he said she was a cold hearted bitch. And that pretty much sums it up. Kim and her husband, Kevin, say the aunts claimed it was taking too long to distribute the proceeds of Granny's estate, so they sent Jonathan over to intimidate his uncle. He would just show up, just constantly, you know, ranting and saying, you know, we want our money. And it wasn't even his money. Right. The only heirs were the two sisters and John Sr. So Jonathan's not entitled to a lick of the money? Not at all. No. Kevin, you're a lawyer. Was John Sr. dragging his feet? No, not at all. It took a few months for him to even get assigned as the executor of the estate in the first place. I think they were upset that he kept her alive as long as he did, because I remember her, them saying once, she's lived a full life, she's in her 90s, let her go. And I just think they wanted their money. Wait, your aunts, Sandra and Anne Marie, were telling your dad, hey, our mom has lived a full life, just let her go? Yeah. They just wanted her out of the picture. They just wanted her dead. Pretty much. And Kim believes they wanted her father dead too. In a civil suit, Kim claims her dad was murdered at the direction of his sister, defendant Sandra Roman. Kim says her killer cousin, Sandra's son, was a puppet of what she calls a money-grubbing family cabal. Jonathan's your cousin. He's my dad's murderer. Cops say Roman snuck up on John, beat him up, put his hands around his throat, and choked him to death. This was a surprise attack. This was a lying in wait surprise attack. Roman hid the body in the basement of the grandmother's house. Look closely at the upper right of this surveillance video. Cops say that's Jonathan stuffing his uncle's body into the trunk of his car. He took the body into the woods behind his mom's house and dug a shallow grave. This is where Jonathan took the body. Yes, these are the woods that uh, he was buried in. All the time, Kim was frantically looking for her dad, never realizing he was already dead. Eight days later, her aunt called to give her the horrifying news. She just said, I'm so sorry. Your father and Jonathan got an altercation. He fell down the stairs and didn't make it. And she hung up. I've never seen anybody beaten up quite like this in my life, and I hope I never do. His eye socket, his right eye socket was completely crushed in. His nose was broken. His jaw was dangling off to the side. It, 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 it didn't even re really resemble him. Attorney Bob Abrams says he has evidence Sandra may have known about the murder. This voicemail Sandra left for John Jr. We heard this voicemail, and quite frankly, it took a while to realize, like, holy cow, there's something before Sandra starts speaking and it's Jonathan describing the brutal beating that he gave to his uncle. That's caught on tape. It's right here. I'd love to play it for you. Yeah, absolutely. Abrams plays that voicemail for us. Listen closely. You can hear the killer speaking in the background before Sandra starts talking. Yeah, I bowled it. John, it's Sandy again. 
So right before she's leaving the message, that was Jonathan talking about the eyeball? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I want to play that again because it almost sounds as though Jonathan is bragging about what he did to his uncle. The eyeball. Nassau County police say there is no evidence that anyone but Jonathan Roman was involved in the murder of his uncle. Sandra told the New York Daily News her son confessed to her saying, quote, Mommy, I did it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But does Sandra know more than she's letting on? The murder in the Long Island suburb sounds almost like a scene from a Shakespearean tragedy. A nephew brutally kills his uncle in a fight over an inheritance. Jonathan Roman, the person who murdered my father, was threatening my father only three, four days before he was murdered. Jonathan Roman murdered John Frankowski Sr. Cops say this surveillance video shows him stuffing the body in a trunk. He later buried the body behind his mother's house. John Jr. says his cousin Roman stole the biggest day of his life, his wedding day. It seems the tragedy is just compounded. Yes. Right before you're about to get married, and your dad is slated to be your best man. He's murdered literally within weeks of you getting married. We buried him two weeks before I was married. In the midst of his grief, John Jr. says he was forced to make a difficult decision. Jonathan Roman already took my world away from me. I wasn't going to allow him to take another thing away from me, and that was my wedding day. So I went through with it. What was it like to be up at the altar knowing that the person you asked to be your best man couldn't be there, your dad, because he was murdered. I mean, were you even able to enjoy your wedding? No. I could not enjoy my wedding. In fact, where he should have been standing, I left an open space for his presence. John's daughter Kim says her dad was taking care of his ailing mother and her aunts were not too pleased. And how did your dad take it? He was not happy about it. When Kim's grandmother died, her dad became the executor of her estate worth over $200,000. She claims her aunts wanted their share of the money immediately. He was grieving his mother. I think he was moving as fast as he could, but it wasn't fast enough for them. Was greed the motive behind John Frankowski's murder? That's what Kim and her brother John Jr. are claiming in a civil suit against their aunts Sandra and Anne Marie. They claim Sandra, the killer's mother, ordered the hit and that the aunts, quote, conspired to kidnap and kill John S. Frankowski Sr. and then hide his body so he could no longer administer the estate. This is your family, Kim. No, they are not my family. They never have been family. When people ask if I have relatives in New York still, no, I do not. All the people I loved are gone. We tried to get into the house after John was, was murdered in order to get a suit for him to bury him. Amory would not let us in. Kim's aunts have never been charged criminally and they deny the allegations in the lawsuit. Jonathan Roman's defense attorney telling the Long Island newspaper, quote, Jonathan is extremely remorseful for the devastating outcome of his actions. Roman admitted he killed his uncle and pleaded guilty to second degree murder. What was it like to be in the courtroom when Jonathan got sentenced? You're in the same room. Again, the hardest thing ever. Very surreal, kind of an out of body experience. Um, when they brought him in, just seeing him. Was horrible. What about other members of the Roman family? Were they, they were not there. there. They weren't even there. Nobody was there. You've heard Kim's claims about her strained relationship with her aunt Sandra and her claim she orchestrated the killing. So we went to Sandra's house to get her side of the story. So Sandra's being accused of dispatching her son to take care of her brother, his uncle. Serious and just wild accusation. So we're gonna see what Sandra has to say about that. Let's go ask her. I walk up to her door. It's open. Someone is home. I ring the bell. Miss Roman, hi, Jason Matera, Crime Watch Dale. Miss Roman, we're just doing a story about your brother's murder. Why would you shut the door? She shuts the, you don't even know what we're gonna ask. How do you want? 
I just have a question for you. Uh, we're doing a story about your brother's murder. Are you in any way involved in your brother's murder? She already slammed the door in her face when she saw the cameras. I'm sorry, but if you have nothing to hide, you usually talk. At the end of the day, this is a family torn apart forever by the actions of a selfish man. Jonathan Roman sentenced 18 years to life in a New York prison. And for Kim, all that is left are memories of her beloved father, a victim of greed, money, and murder. What are you feeling now? Sad, anger. Question it all. Why? Is it all really that all worth it that much for money? After sentencing, Roman's attorney released a statement saying his client's actions were, quote, fueled by his ongoing struggle with drugs and alcohol. However, John's family is not buying it and believes the negotiated plea deal that Roman agreed to actually was made to protect others.